It feels like 99% of new albums that drop today are forgettable and I want to actually take you through some of the biggest releases of this year in hip hop and ask you if you're still playing them starting off with I Never Liked You by Future. No, besides a couple of songs out of my rotation. All right, what much. about Honestly Nevermind by Drake? I still have it. I have the track list there. I'm not bumping that one too much. DS Forever by Gunna. Besides release night and maybe a couple of months with like some good songs, not all that much. To Come be Home, The Kids Miss You by Jack Harlow. Never made my rotation. 12 Carry Toothache by Post Malone. Besides The First Weekend, not really. All right. What about Mr. Morale and The Big Steppers by Kendrick Lamar? Absolutely. Still playing it. Okay. 7220 by Lil Durk. Super commercially successful, but I haven't been bumping it all Colors that much. by NBA Youngboy. No? No, not all that much. Mel My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Yes. Heavy in my rotation. Back for Everything by Kodak Black. No. Bible by Fabio Foreign. Definitely not, no. And I feel like you're not the only person that like isn't really gravitating towards these mainstream releases. I feel the same way. I know a lot of people in our community feel the same way. And I think that these big albums are supposed to be some of the most memorable experiences of the year, but they're kind of just feeling like they come and they go. And I think that there's a serious problem within the entire industry. And there's a lot of statistics that actually back up this point that 99% of albums today are forgettable. Starting off with our attention span, which is declining year after year. And right now, the average attention span for a human is eight seconds, which is a shorter attention span than a fucking goldfish. That's crazy. And when you actually go into our music consumption habits, there was an interesting study conducted by Paul Amir, a music blogger, who in 2014 analyzed billions of Spotify plays from millions of users on the app. And this is what he found. He found that 24% of people are likely to skip a song within its first five seconds. 28% of people are likely mm -hmm. to skip a song within the first 10 seconds of the song. 35% of people will skip a song within its first 30 seconds. And 48% of people will skip a song before it's over. And, and you know why that's alarming, though, is that I think that now as we're continuing to, you know, progress and continuing to consume music, I also feel as if there's less attention and there's less of a feeling going into albums now and people just kind of want to rush through And people aren't them. actually digesting the music anymore. They're not digesting albums because they want that quick rush of, okay, I don't like the... Th the first 10 seconds of this song i'll move on quickly okay but let me next. ask you something do you think that's a product of too much shit being released now because like i feel as if in comparison to my listening habits back then man i have way too much shit going into a new music friday like i feel as if i'm just being bombarded with shit while i have this attention span that's constantly there is decreasing. a lot of new music being released more than ever before and i think that we're kind of to blame for that because we've kind of become a fickle and demanding audience where we just want more and more content and in terms of music if you're looking at the hip-hop genre I kind of looked at the average amount of rap albums being released every month in 2021 oh, that's interesting. versus in 2019 and versus 2016. So in 2021, there was an average of 35 rap albums being released every month. And of course, this is for mainstream releases because you can't really tally up all the underground stuff because we're not, we're, not, we're not aware of everything, right? <laughs> yeah. um, in 2016, though, there was an average of 16 rap albums being released every month. And in 2019, there was an average of 24 rap albums being released every month. And it seems like every year... There's more and more mainstream hip hop releases being offered to us. And I think that because there's so much to go through and there's so much options and everything is so accessible, we kind of want to listen to everything. And as we're listening to everything, we're kind of becoming less patient. And not only right? that, but I also think that it's a case where you have so much shit that's releasing, but at the same time, you can't even stick with these releases. And I think that's what's killing the replay value a lot of these projects. Well, it's think like, about it. You have five albums dropping on one Friday. The next Friday, there's another five. Are you really going to go back to the previous five you just heard in the last week? No, it'd be physically impossible. That's, that's why I'm it. saying for the most of the albums that you had mentioned to me at the beginning of this episode, that's why I had said, okay, some of them for the first weekend and then after that, it's impossible because think about this too. You have your back catalog to go to that you were listening to from 2010, you know, old classics. Like it's very hard to be able to keep up with it. And I think it's coming to a point too now where you have artists and you have record labels that are trying to curve this and they're trying to play into it. I mean, looking at the way artists are formatting their music, music i mean no one's using three verses anymore it's unheard of you know the most prominent part of most mainstream songs now are hooks and the way that they're placing them if they're not within the first fucking three seconds of a song now it probably well, won't do i would anything. say first 30 seconds i, I was to exaggerating be fair. i was exaggerating and though, people you know? are also making songs two minutes long for them to be tiktok friendly for them to be friendly to the spotify algorithm for example to be able to be featured within those playlists and i feel like Yes, the consumers are winning because we're getting so much music, which we're constantly kind of badgering artists to release more frequently. 
but I feel like that's turning artists and labels into factories in the sense that they're mass producing their art in order to meet our demands. And that's and killing the replay value at the end of the day. It is killing and, the and, replay value. And not only value. that, but I think that this has been a problem for a while now. I mean, you had Beyonce in interviews in the, in the 2000s decade that was starting to say in interviews, like, yo, like people are not making album experiences anymore. And I think that it's always been there. But now as technology and as marketing starts to become more enhanced, as things start to become more advanced, you have artists and these record labels that are trying to play on that front. But then again, it still plays exactly. into the replay. And that's what's interesting built. too, is that the actual album format is dying. And this is actually a study done by MRC who reported that album sales, both physical and digital in the United States, dropped from 102 million units in, the, in 2020 down from 501 million in 2007. So at the same time, overall music consumption is rising, which means that people aren't listening to music any less than they used to. They're just listening differently. Okay. And this is pretty easy to point to what it is. It's the fact that we're now living in this playlist era where people are plucking out a couple of songs out of a track list and not giving an album their full attention. Yeah, but it also feels like that with albums where like, you know, the artist is going to be giving you an album in a playlist format. It's less of like, okay, here's a new studio album and here's a new playlist, right? Because you'll go in and like, even if you go into streams and certain albums, right? Like some of the most commercially successful albums of this year, you have one or two songs carrying the totality of plays on that album. Do you feel album. like that's the case for Gun Is DS Forever? Because I feel like besides a song like A Lot of Cake or maybe Push and P, I haven't really, you know, felt that track list was good enough to have those replays. And even if you're looking at the actual streams on DS Forever, like, yeah, you have Push and P that has like 200 million streams, but most of the other songs maybe have 5 million streams, 10 million streams. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most successful albums of the entire year. Yeah, and, and that's why I think it gets difficult because you have these artists that are trying to form their albums off of one or two singles and they expect, you know, I don't even know if they expect it anymore for someone to go through that whole album They're experience. just chasing hits, a lot but, of artists. It's just... But I mean, could you even blame them no. at this point? Because if, if they notice that the consumer is changing, well, they're going to have to adapt to that, right? And the marketing gets adapted. But again, it all ties back to the same thing. Once you start going down that route, well, album experiences become less memorable, making them more forgettable. And I think that that's the problem here is that we're in this constant rat race where you know we want all these albums at a super quick pace we want every single song to fucking hit we want a new album every week from our artists okay let you know let's get it done let's get it there and then once we get it well we're super fucking disappointed and there's not conversation to be had about the album anymore because what is even the album what is the actual movement behind it and i think that as a consumer that's what i'm falling victim to is like i want so much music and i'm excited for all the sonic palettes that are coming out i'm excited for the subgenres but at the same time like is that demand humanly possible to be able to be met so yeah. that's kind of my it feels like a lot of the music is just kind of becoming fabricated to to do something commercially to generate continuous streams to land on top of the charts there's so many clichés that artists are following in terms of having 20 song track lists, having little baby features. But at the end of the day, I just feel like there's also a big lack of originality within artists that are actually, you know, making music right now. And I feel like when you're listening to so much music week after week and artists are using mm -hmm. the similar flows, similar production styles, it all kind of blurs together. It and does. if I'm looking at someone like Playboy Cardi and the movement that he had with Whole Lotta Red, to me, that's one of the most influential and impactful albums of the last few years. And as much as I don't personally like it, I think it's super memorable. Yeah, you have to respect it. And I do respect what he did with it. And we're seeing now that a lot of artists that are popping off now are kind of leeching onto that sound. And not only that, but it's as if Playboy Cardi is grooming his own artists to sound like him, to have those repetitive hooks, to have these nonsensical syllables being repeated to have these rage beats quote unquote and we're seeing that with someone like ken carson who just put out his ex album which i heard once and i have no reason to revisit it because i feel like would i rather listen to an imitator or an innovator when they sound so similar I, I, vocally. I know but you have to think about it from more of a general standpoint in that position and like the way that affects album quality because yes that will affect the album quality because you're getting the copy paste but i mean why wouldn't they do that when they have all these types of types of different fans wanting to come in and hear that same sound like but you as, Card as a fan because would you prefer to listen to someone like coaches who sounds very similar to cardi or would you rather bump Cardi who kind of no, started I would that sound? No, I, I would personally like to bump Cardi, but okay. at the end of the day, like, I'm not I'm not two million people. Like, there's definitely people in that market that want to hear it. And I think that's what's driving it, too, is that the consumer wants that type of music at more of an accelerated rate. So, example, if Cardi wants to keep his exclusivity, right, and he wants to be able to drop every two years to be able to keep fans hungry and wanting to get anticipated into releases, 
Why wouldn't he just release that similar type of sound just under a different artist name and under a different he's marketing? He's keeping that world. sound fresh exactly. and within people's ears. I get exactly. it. I get it from a marketing standpoint. It makes sense. But I'm saying as a consumer, I don't want to hear the same album over and over and again. I, it's the same I, I situation with, with someone like Jack Harlow. I think that Jack Harlow is super talented. I think that he really excels when he's making triumphant music that's filled with horns, that's filled with victory laps about him talking about his come up and his success stories. But with this new album, Come Home, The Kids Miss You, to me, it was super forgettable because it was as if he took one angle from Drake's catalog, which is being that player, trying to seduce women. He took that one angle that Drake does... What mind you, Drake has millions of angles, but he took just that one angle and ran with it and gave us music that had very cringeworthy yes, lyrics. Absolutely. That didn't really have any well, catchy it, melodies it, it, or I, hooks. I think, I think at the end of the day, it yeah. feels forced, right? And I think that's that's the problem with a lot of albums too coming out is they're kind of forcing you to get into a sound rather than presenting you something new and something that's going to be refreshing to your ear. Even something like, let's say, 70 to 20, you know, take those verses on the, on the, on a lot of these albums. And I don't want to single out 70 to 20 because there's fuller releases that do this. You could take the content matter and the production styles from all these albums and then put them in comparison to their past releases. And it's the exact same thing. You know, you even have this art now where there's fucking verses being replicated as far as how many lines or certain words that are being used in them. And then you you go through Genius and you're like, I felt like I've read this song before. Not even listen, I felt like I've read these lyrics before somewhere else. And that's what's alarming to me because if I'm a consumer, you know, yes, okay, maybe it's masqueraded and maybe it's packaged differently, but it's not the same at the end. Well, remember, day, I, I don't know, I, I don't know which song it was or which lyrics they were specifically, but like there was a Roddy Rich bar that was being repeated on multiple songs, right? I exactly. Don't know if you remember but that. It, that was the same thing too. Is that like I get it, right? Like you're gonna have a foundation to your music, and artists have to create within that realms. But when you're not doing anything to upgrade, it will affect the music quality, and then that's how it affects you know music becoming yeah. forgettable. Because you know the reason why they were remember, like the reason why albums are remembered in the first place is because they ev evoke such a grand emotion in you they're like fuck you know like i haven't heard this sound before i'm down for this all this is making my rotation because i just don't have any access yeah it. but now when you're taking that same feeling and that same sort of sound and you're like okay let me replicate it for like four more studio albums why would you need those four but more studio yeah albums, but that's what know? i'm saying is that i feel like so many more albums would be memorable if artists decided to roll the fucking dice a bit more i mean do something out of the box. Do what Tyler, the creator, did with Igor, where he totally changed up his sound and infused hip-hop with synth-pop and a bunch of different styles. I feel like, especially with an album, I want to bring Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers into the conversation <laughs> because I feel like it's a genius body of work. I have it as arguably the best ab album of 2022. But to me, it hasn't stuck in my rotation. And there's a few reasons why. I think one of the reasons is more of a personal argument for me in the sense that I wanted a bigger splash. It was Kendrick's return after five years. And I wanted him to kind of grab my attention in terms of giving me high energy songs. Mm -hmm. And his tone throughout the album is more mellow. Not only that, but I feel like this album was an album made for Kendrick himself, where he's exercising his demons. He's kind of being very therapeutic in his approach. But he's not giving you those bangers. He's not giving you, let's say, music that's geared towards the charts. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, but Which I respect. That's totally fine. And I just feel like once I kind of got the meaning of the album and kind of broke that down, there just wasn't songs that really grabbed me, in, grabbed me in terms of vibes or energy. Yeah, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contrast that and say that example for someone like me and a lot of different Kendrick fans. It's so refreshing to his catalog that it allowed us to have to go back and really gravitate towards it and put it back into rotation. So I get where you're coming from with the replay value because even naturally, it's like it's a double disc album. So you're obviously not going to go through everything as much. But I mean, I still do find replay value within it. And I, I think that looking at the mainstream releases, it's tough too for these artists to be able to keep up with it because they're constantly trying to understand what people want and what the demand is because they have to deliver on that and then that's how you know successful albums have longevity within rotations of listeners it's like okay you know like we we met this demand and there's no one else you know gonna there's no one else that's gonna be able to you know supply this it's it's business at the end of the day right but i i feel like even when i talk to artists and i talk to producers now it's kind of like fuck if i don't make this certain sound or i don't make this certain type of production for an artist no one's gonna hear it no one's gonna hear it and no one's gonna ever use yeah. it even looking at you know let's say drake some of his best material is his least streamed shit right so like why make a full album full of that when you know that it's not gonna do anything commercially so even the the incentives for the artists aren't there to be creative and to be able to do it like it's such a hard race to be able to to perform in that yeah you can't like even we can't make that, that an excuse, though. I mean, look at something like Dr. Dre's The Chronic. He literally brought in a totally unique production style I, with G-Funk, 
And there was nothing telling him that that was going to work. But I'm going to tell you something, though, is that the competition back then was much less. I mean, he had a full seat to explore because the genre as a whole was so underdeveloped and he was the one that pushed it forward. But now what I'm seeing is that, like you said at the beginning of this episode, right? Okay, you said at the beginning of this episode, you have a lot more music coming out on a night. Exactly. How are you going to tread more waters? But that's what I'm telling you, bro. If we're now in an oversaturated market and you're hearing so much of the similar styles in order for people to kind of fit into that mold of what a hit song is why not as a mainstream artist who has an audience why not try to break out of that mold why not try to be distinct within that big melting pot it's it's hard though because at the end of the day those creative decisions are made amongst the artists and i agree with you it's definitely it's definitely taking away from the originality and quality of projects and how they've stuck through my rotation but just as a whole though i think that they have kind of no choice to do that i mean how many guys are locked into crazy deals with rca or let's say other record labels and they have to be able to format their music like that or else they're not getting fucking paid you know at the end of the day too it's like the reason why i think a lot of these albums are becoming forgettable is because there's too much business behind it there's too much of a, there's too much of a marketing pull behind it rather than prioritizing the art. People are not prioritizing art anymore. They're prioritizing marketing. Well, not only and that, but I, I feel like we're, we're truly to blame as well. And I brought up this analogy in the past. And I feel like when a new music Friday comes along, it's as if I'm a guest at a wedding who's hungry and I have so many different options. I have the sweets table. I have the charcuterie section. I have the pizza station. And the last thing that I want is to leave that party and have someone tell me, you didn't try that fucking piece of chocolate cake? And I'm like, shit, you know what? I didn't get to it. So with every new Music Friday, I want to be able to go through every single release and maybe I'll go through them quicker but, in order to get through each exactly. one. But that's my problem. Why can't I have the patience to gradually listen from one album to the next, fully digest it, and go through the motions. Well, I think it's because you have an attention span less than a fucking goldfish right now and you're getting 35 albums but a weekend. You know? Not so only that, but it's tough. a lot of new music doesn't seem to be sticking with people because this is another stat that I brought up. If you're looking at the most streamed songs of this past week, out of the top 200, in the past, there used to be 100 of those that were hip-hop songs. This past week, only eight songs out of 200 were hip-hop songs for the most streamed songs of the week. And out of those eight songs, only four of them are from this decade. And those include Jimmy Cook's Wait For You by Future, Industry Baby by Lil Nas X, and First Class by Jack Harlow. Yeah. Which is staggering to it, me. It is staggering to you because it's coming low-key from like four different artists or three different artists. And I think that's what's difficult too is that there needs to be able to have... We, we need to change the culture as far as like the way we're consuming music because it's becoming a problem now. And like even at that, Spotify is going to reward artists for making marketable format of music that's going to get pushed through their playlists. That's going to have better attention rates. Like Spotify is not paying you if, you're, if your user is not getting 30... You know, be, like after 30 seconds after listening to your song. Like that's tough for an artist to perform on. Like where are the creators of boundaries if you have to be able to perform there so i mean if you're an artist let me let me let me ask you a question i want you to answer this as honest as you can all right like put yourself in the artist's shoes what are you doing you know you're no, you know you're not going to get your bag and you're not going to be able to sustain this if you're making the sound that you want but you could alter your music to be able to perform there and still get your bag while okay having to compromise the quality and having it maybe get forgettable in the next couple i just of think months, there's a know? lot of artists that will never sacrifice their artistic integrity and kendrick is a prime example of that so i think that it depends artist for artist but i think that another thing too is that there's a lack of unanimous classic or an instant classic within the genre within the last few years and as much as i don't like it to me whole lot of red is the most impactful album of the last few years it had people talking it still has people talking and people really rallied behind that and i feel like we're not getting that with a lot of new releases in 2022. But guys, let us know down in the comments. Do you feel as if 99% of albums today are forgettable? It's a very interesting conversation. And if you guys are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're having these types of narrative-based conversations on a weekly basis. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.